I think we'll wait until eight. No, no, it's eight fifteen. Let's go. Oh, all right. And we're recording. We will begin. It is eight fifteen. So my name is Megan Moore, and I would like to welcome you all to Russell's Redox Room. We love this. We think it has a great alliteration. So welcome, Russell's Redox Room. Uh, Russell is a health education a health educator, speaker, author, digestive wellness expert, and he also knows a lot about cells. Um, ever since I've known Russell, he's been talking about cells and about healing at the cellular level. And so when we were introduced to ASEA back in uh, September of 2011, it was um, an incredible opportunity for Russell, especially. Uh, he was introduced by a colleague, a friend of his, and uh, he immediately bought Gary Samuelson's book. And I know that many of you have watched uh, the interview with um, Danielle and Gary Samuelson. So that is the reason why we're here today, to answer any and all questions you may have from Russell. And I will tell you that Russell has probably read um, Gary Samuelson's book, The Healing of Science, The Science of Healing Revealed. I can't tell you how many times, but every time in those first few years uh, that we started drinking ASEA, um, Russell would have Gary's book with him and it's uh, marked up and there's highlighter in it and I, think that he has learned this book by heart. And, <laughs> um, he's probably got many passages memorized. So Russell, I know that you wanted to say something first, so please go ahead. Thanks, Megan. And thanks everybody for being here tonight. And it's true, this is my original copy of Gary Samuelson's book, The Science of Healing Revealed. And it, it's very dog-eared. And yes, there's yellow highlighter throughout the book and notes in all the pages, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, I just wanted to say a couple of very short things and then immediately open it up for Q and A. Um, and that is I watched the video, uh, the interview with Gary and Danielle a week ago. And then I watched it again this afternoon and uh, I was very moved uh, uh, as I always am to be in the presence of such humility which is definitely Gary Samuelson, the person, and to be aware at the same moment that this scientist uh, has made possible to the world something that is extremely significant. In fact, many scientists, uh, including Gary Samuelson, say that it's literally the most important biomedical breakthrough in the 21st century so far and the, uh, the ability to create redox signaling molecules, stabilize them, and be able to use them as a bioreplenishment product, a bioreplenishment supplement, may, be, may continue to be the number one breakthrough for another 50, 60, 70 years from now. So pretty amazing. Um, so redox signaling molecules were discovered for the very first time in 1997. So it's a very new science. 1998, the scientists who made that discovery won the Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology. Since 1998, laboratories around the world have been trying to biosynthesize these molecules, knowing how important they are to every cellular process. Literally, nothing happens inside the human body. Nothing happens inside any animal body. Nothing happens inside any plant body without redox signaling molecules. So many labs, this is literally the number two area of medical research in the world today. The number one area being stem cells to redox signaling molecules. And as Gary Samuelson pointed out in the video, stem cells don't work unless they have sufficient redox signaling molecules telling them what to do. 
So again, nothing happens without relax. So um, in, nine, in 2008, a team of scientists led by Dr. Gary Sanderson figured out how to stabilize these molecules. They had to figure out how to create them, which they did, highly patented process. That was the discovery that Verdis Norton made. And then they hired Dr. Gary Samuelson to figure out how to stabilize these molecules so that they could be put into a bottle and stay potent and bioactive for many, uh, many months. The, the redox molecules stay active in this bottle for up to 18 months. That's, that's a whole other miracle. So the last thing I want to share, and then we'll open it up for Q&A, is redox signaling molecules work 100% of the time. In other words, when you, are, when you take this product, when you apply the molecules to your skin in the form of the gel, it works 100% of the time and with 100% of the cells that the redox molecules come in contact with. And that's not theoretical, that's hard science. So there are only two questions that need to be addressed or need to be understood for anyone who wants to benefit from these uh, amazing little molecules, to benefit from this breakthrough. And that is to understand that there's no way to determine in advance what your level of deficiency or imbalance is. So you have to be willing to experiment. Some people have uh, results with four ounces a day. Some people need six ounces a day. Some people need 10 ounces a day. Some people need 16 ounces a day. So there's, and there's no way to know that in advance. So you just have to be open to that as a possibility that your body needs. Uh, so it's not just a deficiency of molecules. That's part of the equation. But there's also an imbalance. You have to have the right balance of reductance and oxidants. These are the two types of redox signaling molecules. So we don't know how much your body may need in order for you to start feeling healthy again, for you to feel the redox potential of your body moving closer to normal again. And then we don't know the extent of the current damage in your body. We don't know how many damaged cells you have. We don't know how inefficient all your different internal organs are. But we know that with the right amount of redox, the right amount of time, we're not talking about years, we're talking about weeks and months, that your body will start restoring normal functioning. And then when that happens, whatever, whatever the problem is can either resolve completely or it can uh, improve tremendously. So we have something that's very important that everybody can benefit from. And that's why we have this mission of sharing this information with everyone who will listen, because literally uh, everyone can benefit. So that's what I wanted to share as kind of an introduction. And so let me pass it back to Megan. Uh, I think she's going to start us off with the Q&A. Yeah, I will. So if you have that you a question that you would like answered, please put it into the chat and I will then direct that question on to Russell. But Russell, I thought, first of all, Gary Samuelson is an atomic medical physicist. Can you tell us uh, what that is? I thought that would be a good place to start. And what is nanotechnology? Okay, great. So an atomic medical physicist is a very, very smart person. Well, that's the first thing. So uh, some, most people are familiar with molecular biology and molecules are components of cells and a molecule can be as tiny as two atoms in size. In fact, some of our redox molecules are two atoms in size, three atoms in size, four atoms in size. And these are literally the smallest molecules that exist. And other molecules can be hundreds of atoms in size and shape and structure. So a, an atomic medical physicist is someone who works with atomic structures and 
subatomic particles, the quarks and nanoparticles that go into uh, the structures of, uh, of, of molecules. But nanotechnology is the science of subatomic particles, and these are used in the creation of drugs, in the creation of drug delivery systems. That's the most common use of nanotechnology in the medical world. Uh, but obviously, there are many other applications, and this is another application of nanotechnology. So redox molecules are formed from just five atoms, oxygen, hydrogen, sodium, chloride, and nitrogen. Those five atoms are broken down into their subatomic particles and then reconfigured through a highly patented process into redox signal molecules. So Gary Samuelson, Dr. Gary Samuelson, uh, was already an atomic medical physicist before he met Virtus Norton. So he was already working in this world of nanotechnology and had worked with several biomedical companies to help with their nanotechnology projects. So uh, it was just one of these divine accidents uh, that Gary Sanderson lived on the same block that Virtus Norton lived. And when Virtus started looking around for someone to help him figure out uh, what this science was behind Redox, uh, uh, I think his, his oldest daughter knew Gary's wife. Somehow, and that's how they got together. And uh, so an atomic medical physicist is someone who works with the smallest particles uh, that we know of, quarks and, and subatomic particles and things like that. And thank God for somebody like Dr. Gary Samuelson, or we would not have uh, the ASEA product or the Renew28 product. Well, thank you, Russell. We do have a couple of other questions here. Uh, one, so if I'm not experiencing any noticeable changes, does that need does that mean I need more ASEA? Um, yes and no. So it depends on how long, depends on when you got started and how long you've been um, using the uh, Redox uh, products. Um, so, I mean, so here's the thing, even at four ounces a day, which is the general startup dosage recommended, and even if you feel absolutely nothing, it's working. It's working, it's working, it's working. These molecules at any level, even if you're just drinking one ounce a day, is helping your body to fix and repair damaged cells. So again, the issue is how extensive is the damage, uh, which helps you determine uh, how much you should, you know, increase to, gradually increase until you start to see results and, and feel results. So it's not necessarily a problem at all that uh, you don't feel anything yet, depending on how long you've been doing that. But clearly, I mean, after 10 years and after observing people at, you know, over the last 10 years, it is remarkable how many people were uh, introduced and then they, they only found out that they should be drinking four ounces a day, or that's what they thought. And so they went for months drinking four ounces a day and didn't necessarily feel anything. And they went to an ASEA event or were on a Zoom or a teleconference and they heard that maybe they should try six ounces a day. <laughs> and then they tried six ounces a day and they had their breakthrough or eight ounces a day. So, so really it's an, it's an issue of uh, the, the level of deficiency and imbalance that your body has and uh, your willingness to gradually increase the amount of ASEA you drink and the renew that you apply on your neck or other places and then give it enough time. But always, 100% of the time it's working. And we, we also had many stories in the community of people who did not necessarily notice anything. And this was even two or three years later but it turned out that it was doing very amazing things in their body and saved them from serious uh, conditions that they later learned about had been corrected by the redox molecule. Thank you, Russell. And we have one from Roseanne. 
Since we recognize how this achievement has benefited all students, what would it take to honor Dr. Gary with a Nobel Prize in Medicine? Yeah, hey, thank you, Roseanne. Great to see you. Thanks for that question. Um, I've been, I know I'm not the only one, but uh, many of us have been saying since the inception of ASEA that someday Dr. Gary Samuelson should definitely win the Nobel Prize. Uh, I don't know what it takes. I mean, that's, um, I'm sure people get nominated every year uh, based on their work uh, in, the, in various fields. I think this would be, well, a Nobel Prize was awarded back in 1998 in medicine and physiology to uh, the scientists who, who literally made the discovery, oh, these are redox signaling molecules. Back then they called them react reactive oxygen species, but they were oxidants. And prior to that discovery, oxidants were always considered to be negative, uh, harmful. Uh, so that was also part of the breakthrough. And Gary explains it very uh, clearly in his books that uh, there are two types of redox molecules, oxidants, which are not always negative free radicals and reductants. And it's the pairing, the balancing of these two type of molecules that makes it safe and makes it incredibly uh, helpful for the repairing of damaged cells. So I don't know what the process is uh, in order to nominate someone and help somebody uh, to uh, get a Nobel Prize. But if there's if there's a write-in uh, process, we should uh, gather all the ASEA people from all over the world and, and start making that happen. <laughs> Beth Wafford is nodding her head. Okay, yeah, next question. All right, I have one. I believe it's from Mary Margaret. Knowing that the reductant molecules are important in bringing homeostasis to the body after the oxidant molecules have done their job, if a solution was injected into the body that would do away with the function of the reductant molecules would supplementing with redox rectify and bring balance back to the body. Wow. Do you want me to read that again, Russell, or did you get it? No, I got it. Um, I, you know, I, uh, and thank you, Mary Margaret, for that question. So, so Gary, especially in his second book, talks a lot about redox homeostasis. And redox homeostasis means that at the cellular levels, there has been reestablished a balance of oxidants and reductants. That is redox homeostasis. And when redox homeostasis is reestablished, the redox potential of that cell has been reestablished, and then normal function can be restored far more easily than if these uh, things remain out of balance. So that's number one. Now, number two is I don't know of any um, situation yet where redox, uh, uh, redox liquid like the ASEA was injected into somebody's body. But if they need uh, volunteers for that experiment, I'll sign up for that one. Uh, there have been many situations where uh, I wish that we had figured out how to do that. I wouldn't be surprised if we will do that at some point uh, in the future. I know that in the video interview with uh, Dr. Gary Samuelson, he mentioned about um, wound care. Uh, he mentioned also uh, in this second book about having uh, the redox liquid available in surgical situations to stop the bleeding uh, of, you know, uh, in a normal surgical procedure, uh, and also to uh, sterilize and make sure that no infection would occur. So there, there, there are so many potential applications of the redox molecules. Again, we're talking about a, a fluid that is identical to what our own body produces to protect the cell and to allow the cell to perform at optimal levels. So you can literally pour ASEA into an open wound and it's going to uh, facilitate, accelerate 
the healing process. He talks about a story that he witnessed uh, with his wife when she cut her finger badly, very badly. And Megan and I had that same experience uh, many years ago when Megan cut her hand on a piece of glass, needed stitches, and um, we just put the sea on it. And when we opened up the, the uh, bandage the next morning, we could literally see it already healing. And so she never got stitches. And that thing co healed completely. And today, seven or eight years later, you can barely, barely see a scar. So, so yes, I, theoretically, there should be absolutely no problem with um, having the redox liquid, you know, to be used uh, for all kinds of reasons, uh, internally and externally. Thank you, Russell. Now, Mary Margaret, I'm not sure you've you've made another comment here. I'm talking about something being injected in the body. Not yeah, the Meg, hold on, Meg. So, uh, Beth, go ahead, unmute yourself, and please uh, uh, feel free to uh, add something to that. This is Wofford from Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you, Russell. Um, this is beautifully explained. Thank you so much. Uh, it, the general thought process, the company line is obviously this product is not meant to be injected. Um, I, because I hear a lot of animal stories, I have heard people that they're desperate because their animal, um, the two occasions that I, I have heard personally, whose horses are terminally ill, I mean, critically ill, and they are so desperate that they, their vet said, sure, I'll do anything you want because we're not gonna, what I have in my arsenal is not saving this horse. This horse is gonna die. And I've had, one was injected subcutaneously, which is just under the skin uh, because the vet was a little bit worried about injecting it in, uh, intravenously. And I, they called me and they said, you know, can we, you think we can do this? And I said, look, I am not a vet. I'm not in a position to say that. Um, I, you know, and the vet said, yeah, why not? Why shouldn't we try? And they had marvelous results. This horse came around and was noticeably better within minutes, within like 15 minutes. They, he started recovering and feeling better, and, and it, it was really remarkable. When I talked to um, some medical people in ASEA, I did, they were willing to go so far as to say if, if I would be maybe comfortable doing it subcutaneously, which is just under the skin. Um, or I am, they were, they were still like kind of, oh, you know, because doctors are so geared toward being careful of what you inject in the bloodstream, obviously. But I don't think it would be necessary to put it in the bloodstream. I think if you injected it subcutaneously, the molecules would react so quickly and go where it was needed that I probably, you know, I, I again, the company line is, is not to inject it at all. I mean, that's not what it's been approved for, but it did help critically ill animals um, in two different cases that I know of. So, you know, I just take that for what it's worth. Thanks, Russell. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. And we, we do know, so yes, I mean, you know, we're, we're all um, uh, guided by compliance. Uh, we all have to be very, very careful of how we suggest to others that our products are used uh, because they're, you know, because that's, that's very important. But Gary Samuelson also spoke in the interview, one of the very, uh, he talked about wanting to do some early trials with animals, again, to make sure that there was no toxicity whatsoever. And in one of the, uh, one of the um, studies, they literally replace 20% of the blood in mice with redox with this liquid, you know, this redox liquid, and the animals just got better and better and better. So, so that was that was a true study that was done in the early days of the seal. Um, uh, we Mary do Michael, have. Did you did you want to say something? Please feel free. Yes. I do want to say something. Um, that was a great conversation, but um, I wasn't clear in my question that I sent to Megan. 
uh, I wasn't talking about injecting redox into the body. Um, my question was that if something was injected to the body that had the potential to harm the reductant molecules from working properly, intentionally harming them from working properly, if you were supplementing with the redox, is that going to bring it back into homeostasis? Is, is that going to take care of that issue where the body no longer has the reductance to handle the issues in the body, if that makes yeah, sense? So, um, you know, theor again, theoretically now we're talking that redox signaling molecules have the ability to restore homeostasis throughout the entire body in every system and every organ and every cell. So if something was injected into the body that destroyed the redox potential of the body, that substance would be a toxic substance. And it could be any number of things to cause that harmful effect. So, so yes, I mean, one, one of the things that we know that redox signaling molecules do, even at four ounces a day, is to increase the body's production of its own endogenous antioxidants. The most important substance that the human body produces to address and resolve any toxicity is something called glutathione. So by drinking ASEA, even four ounces a day, it increases the body's production up to 800%. And so by producing more glutathione, producing more superoxide dismutase, these are endogenous antioxidants that have the ability to detoxify the human body. In fact, Dr. Mark Hyman, who's one of the top functional medical doctors in the world, uh, said uh, in a book he wrote uh, in 2004 called Nutrigenomics that in all the cancer patients that he had worked with over his career, every single one of them had a deficiency in glutathione. So anything that we can do to help the body produce more glutathione is going to be essential, instrumental in allowing that body to uh, to uh, to heal, basically, and primarily to detoxify from any toxic substance that found its way into the body. Is that is that helpful, Mary Margaret? Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks for that question. Okay, we have a question from Ali uh, Russell. Dr. Samuelson talked about detox. This week, my new person started out with four ounces a day of ASEA. His hands swelled. Also, he called me about the neuropathy in his feet and feet pain. The Renew 28 relief, he was relieved with the Renew 28 and that amazed him. I told him the swelling was detox and to cut back on the ASEA on Mount. I think she's asking if, if I think Allie's probably asking if she advised her new person correctly. Yes, yes. And th thank you for that question, Allison. Um, and Gary, you know, talk, Dr. Samuelson talks about this in the video interview. So what, what every person needs to be aware of, and this is why it's so important that everybody has a sponsor who's been educated about, you know, some basic things about uh, nutrition and health and the healing process. So, so yes, redox molecules help to detect damaged cells and either repair or replace damaged cells. That's true. Uh, and it's also true that redox molecules help the body restore homeostasis, optimize homeostasis. But then there has to be a basic understanding of what is happening 24 hours a day in every cell of the human body. And what's happening 24 hours a day is every cell is taking in oxygen, taking in water, and minerals and trace minerals and taking in micronutrients. And every cell of the body is metabolizing all of those raw materials. And so even if we all lived in the Garden of Eden with no pollution anywhere, 
every cell of your body produces metabolic toxins every single day, every second of every day. And those toxins have to be eliminated. Now, again, in an ideal world, in an ideal environment, your body is doing this 24 hours a day. But millions and millions of people out there do not live in the Garden of Eden, are not properly hydrated, do not eat really good food, have all kinds of levels of toxins in their body, have been on medication for 5, 10, or 20 years. And so when their body has the opportunity, by introducing their body to these redox molecules, the, the cells of the body know exactly what needs to happen. And the number one item on many of those cells agenda is to be, help that cell become more efficient. And that means if there are stored toxins that the cell hasn't been able to push out for months or years, then the cells are going to start doing that. Because the only way that cell can be healthy again is to first get rid of the garbage that's been accumulating. So it's very common for people who have built up, built up toxicity to experience uh, some uh, adjustment <laughs> issues when they start drinking ASEA or using Renew28 or both. So this is why it's so critical for everyone to be taught how to hydrate properly. The number one way to minimize anybody's detoxification process is to make sure they're properly hydrated before they start drinking a seal, certainly at the same time that they're introduced to the redox molecules. So that's, that's number one. But even if you're perfectly hydrated, in, even if you start with four ounces a day, your body could simply say, oh, we need to slow down. You need to slow down. You need to take three ounces a day or two ounces a day. Uh, I recognize somebody on this Zoom tonight that started out with one ounce a day uh, and did that for several months. In fact, possibly even a whole year before she felt confident to increase uh, but over time, uh, you, you know, people can increase the amount of the redox molecules to optimize their homeostasis. So yes, uh, headaches and fatigue are usually the most common type of um, symptoms of cleansing or detox, uh, but there are many others, and it, it can vary quite a bit from person to person. Okay, thank you, Russell. I think we have time for one more question here. Ouch. Where did that time go? It goes by quickly. This is, um, we're bringing in the ASEA VIA line here too with Hank. How will all or one of the ASEA VIA line help someone have post-stroke still having leg spasms? Uh, who, well, whose phone is that? Oh, that's our phone. <laughs> yeah, you are calling. Uh, You're not me. Yeah, you just called me. <laughs> well, it had to have been Evan or Brian. No, they are drinking ASEA and using Renew 28, hydrating three liters daily with uh, Celtic sea, gray sea salt, and lemon. So I think Hank is talking about the combination of bringing the ASEA via line in with nutritionals the building, the builders, and uh, drinking ASEA and using Renew 28. Hank, what um, and how will the ASEA be well, Maggie, Just let Kathleen ask the question. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about the lengthy question. Um, Hank has still had um, some spasms in his legs after the stroke. He didn't have it really before. And, and so now he, he's having difficulty sleeping at night and he's just trying all kinds of things. So we're trying to find that magic bullet. You know, what, what's that one you know, combination? He does, eight, he does hydrate very well before taking his first eight ounces of a C in the morning. And he hydrates well during the day. He's exercising, you know, he's doing I, I don't watch him, so I think he's doing. <laughs> I, I think he's doing most everything he should be, but it, it just seems 
I mean, they were tremendous. I mean, they were catastrophic before. They're, <clears throat> they've calmed down, but I, we're just curious, is there, you know, he's just trying to find what's missing. Yeah. And we don't know if it's the ASEA via line, if there's something, those people say, um, um, but it, uh, you know, they, they suggest like um, extra, you know, something extra that he might be missing. Yeah, so, so the symptom that you're dealing with, Hank, is you, you're cramping up in your legs? It's more of a spasm, that, like not much of cramp. Okay, spasming where? In your calf area or? Most of the, most of the calf, sometimes it's uh, my quads, but it's mostly the calf. Okay. Um, so uh, again, typically any, any spasming or cramping is, has to do with an electrolyte imbalance, uh, mineral deficiency imbalance. Dehydration is the most common uh, reason for spasming of any muscle group. So if, you're, so if you're doing the water cure correctly and consistently, uh, you know, we might need to look at your micronutrient inflow. Uh, source, you know, uh, via uh, source product is a great way to introduce a full spectrum of micronutrients, but it's, it's hard to say in this context what, it, it could be a combination of something, maybe a little bit more of a particular group of micronutrients, but it also could be something that you're doing accidentally, inadvertently, that uh, might be causing some, you know, depletion of your minerals and trace minerals. So why don't you and I talk tomorrow or the next day, you know, we'll get on the call and, you know, it, I probably need to ask you a few more questions uh, that we, you know, just can't do in, in this context, but Thank you, Russell. I, I'm yeah. happy to help help like that, okay? Thank you, Hank okay. and Kathleen. Thank you, Thank Russell. You. Russell, it's almost the top of the hour. Uh, we have one more question and um, it's this. You've met Gary and had a number of conversations with him, of course, read his book, his books a number of times. But in your words, what would you, what do you think, what would you say that Gary Samuelson is most excited about? Yeah, I think it, uh, thanks for that question, Megan. And thanks everybody for being here tonight and, um, and asking these questions and sharing the uh, ASEA Redox journey with so many people. I've, I've talked to Gary Samuelson many, many times, sat at the same table with him at all these different conferences. And I, I saw him answer this question today at the end of the interview with uh, Danielle Matthews. And he kind of, he, he tears up every time because he's, he's aware of what this means scientifically. But I, I know from talking to him and, and those of you who also know him and have talked to him know that the most important thing for him is the impact that this has had on individual people. Uh, many of us uh, on the Zoom tonight have had major significant health improvements because of the, uh, the technology that Gary Samuelson helped bring to the world. And so I, I know he is extremely proud of that accomplishment, but he is continuously uh, humbled and inspired by the impact that this has on uh, so far hundreds of thousands of people and someday that'll be millions of people. So, um, so I know that's, that's the, greatest, um, the greatest benefit to him uh, as a scientist uh, being part, instrumental part of bringing this uh, technology to the world. The impact that it's had on so many people and the impact that it will continue to have on many, many more people. Thank you, Russell. I do remember the first time I saw Gary Samuelson walk on stage and uh, he was the most humble. He was like, almost like a typical scientist to me. He was so shy and you could hardly hear him and he talked about being a little boy and picking up a leaf and, you know, gazing at this leaf and the wonderment of the world being awakened in him. And uh, it was really, um, 
I, yeah, we are forget, forever grateful to Gary Samuelson and thanks very much to Danielle for bringing this interview to us. It, it's really a very important one for us because it gives us a glimpse of Gary again. And thank you, Russell, for your uh, perfect answers to the questions. And um, thank you all for joining us in Russell's Redox room on March 1st, which is Russell's birthday. And- uh, <laughs> Michael. Yeah, we will host <laughs> Russell's Redox Room again on April Fool on April Fool's Day. That's April first. So, um, but I'm not sure what is the first Monday of April. But we will see you all again then. So have a wonderful week, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks so much thank for you. being here. Have Bye. a great week. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Bye. Thank, thank you and thank happy you. birthday. Thank you, yes. Mason. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Bye bye. Bye.